He is known for many things, being an astrophysicist, cosmologist, astronomer, astrobiologist, and author. But the one thing that sets him apart from everyone else is his extraordinary ability to deliver the message of science to the public. As one of the most well-known scientists ever, he was able to humanize science and deliver it to the masses. He spoke in a vocabulary almost as large as the topics he tackled, and he did all of this and more in his one life. A life of studying, research, and education, which still largely affects the way science is communicated to this day. Born in Brooklyn, New York in 1934, Carl Sagan was the oldest of two children. His scientific interest began when he was young when his parents took him to the 1939 New York World's Fair. Amazed at the exciting possibilities of the future, he continued to actively pursue a scientific career, receiving a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics from the University of Chicago. This led him to his work with NASA where he predicted the existence of methane lakes on Saturn's giant moon Titan showed that the atmosphere of the early Earth contained powerful greenhouse gases and was one of the first to understand that seasonal changes on Mars were due to wind-blown dust. He was a pioneer in the search for extraterrestrial life and intelligence and played a major role in every NASA mission to explore the depths of our solar system in the first 40 years of the space age. He also picked the landing spots of the Viking lander on Mars and composed messages carried by the space probe's pioneer Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Sagan began Cosmos on the shores of the cosmic ocean, the Earth, the only place which all mankind is familiar with. He described the intricacies of life on Earth and how life evolved over an extraordinary amount of time, from single-celled organisms to simple multicellular organisms to animals that we see today. He began his descriptions of these theories with stories that were interesting and could be easily understood. He was great about uh, connecting with people, connecting with uh, young children, often. Um, and being able to uh, talk to them about things and, and say, this is not over your head. You, uh, you are just as intelligent and just as capable of understanding this material as anybody else. And, uh, you know, if you are introduced to it in a way that is, uh, that is not intentionally or unintentionally um, too opaque, you know, if, you can, if it can be explained to you in a way that is a uh, very down to earth. Um, then you will get it and you will understand it and, and often you will find that to be um, you know enlightening and, and invigorating and um, I, you know I, I think he, he really was uh, fantastic at that. As the series continued, Sagan began to explore concepts and ideas that transcended the bounds of Earth. He consistently remarked about the possibility of life within our solar system and the chance of intelligent civilizations outside of it. Carl didn't just give the viewer cold hard facts, he gave them a sense of wonder. He spoke beyond the known knowledge of science and avoided talking simply of a singular field and instead branched into biology, astronomy, particle physics, history, and sometimes politics. He explained that the scientific method was something people lived and died by, how some scientists would follow the evidence wherever it would lead, despite pressure from the outside world to stick with the status quo. He criticized the beliefs of philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle disregarded scientists and instead hypothesized ideas without experimentation. Plato and Aristotle were comfortable in a slave society. They offered justifications for oppression. They served tyrants. They taught the alienation of the body from the mind, a natural enough idea, I suppose, in a slave society. They separated the thought from matter. They divorced the earth from the heavens. Divisions which were to dominate Western thinking for more than 20 centuries. Cosmos ended with a call to action, a demand for the intelligent beings of Earth to avoid self-destruction. He urged the viewers to examine Earth as a gem in the cosmic field, a place that needs to be nurtured, prized, and handled very cautiously. From space, there is no evidence of political boundaries, only lush blues, greens, and the effervescent glow of lights at night. All the bombs, dropped on all the cities of World War II amounted to some two million tons of TNT, two megatons. Coventry and Rotterdam, Dresden and Tokyo, all the death that rained from the skies between 1939 and 1945 
100,000 blockbusters, two megatons. Today, two megatons is the equivalent of a single thermonuclear bomb, one bomb with the destructive force of the Second World War. But there are tens of thousands of nuclear weapons. The missile and bomber forces of the Soviet Union and the United States have warheads aimed at over 15,000 designated targets. No place on the planet is safe. The energy contained in these weapons, genies of death, patiently awaiting the rubbing of the lamps, totals far more than 10,000 megatons, but with the destruction concentrated efficiently, not over six years, but over a few hours. A blockbuster for every family on the planet. A World War II every second for the length of a lazy afternoon. The lasting effects of Dr. Sagan's work are still felt even today. His series Cosmos, which achieved 500 million viewers, was only the start of what would become the energetic movement to interest the general public in the field of science. More science shows soon popped up. In the early 1980s, the Discovery Channel started airing documentaries on popular science. Then in the 1990s, the Bill Nye The Science Guy show began. Although Nye's show caters to a preteen audience, he still credits Sagan with much of his success since Nye was a student studying at Cornell and was heavily influenced by Sagan my 10th reunion. I met with him for a few moments, and I said, I want to do this show about science for kids. He said, focus on pure science. Kids resonate to pure science. That was his verb, resonate. So the Science Guy show has a little bit about bridges and dams and civil engineering works and gears, but it's mostly about science. Carl Sagan's legacy isn't only felt in television, though. Hank Green is reaching out to a new generation with his web series SciShow. While quirky, funny, and often dealing with somewhat minor questions, the show caters to more than 2 million subscribers. Answering questions like, why does rain smell, why do stars twinkle, and why do atoms bond? Finally though, in 2014, Dr. Sagan's legacy came full circle with the debut of the reboot of Cosmos. Like the original, the reboot involves a trip through space in the ship of the imagination, with frequent stops at Earth to note important events in scientific history. The show also contains updated facts and new discoveries for the viewers to learn. Most importantly though, it contains an energetic host who believes passionately in the cause of science. Neil deGrasse Tyson, like so many other scientists, was grabbed by the dynamic, charismatic, and genuine character of Dr. Sagan, who was above all, a good man who dedicated his life to spread the incredible message of science to the masses. This is Carl Sagan's own calendar from 1975. Who was I back then? I was just a 17-year-old kid from the Bronx with dreams of becoming a scientist. And somehow, the world's most famous astronomer found time to invite me to Ithaca in upstate New York and spend a Saturday with him. I remember that snowy day like it was yesterday. He met me at the bus stop and showed me his laboratory at Cornell University. Carl reached behind his desk and inscribed this book for me. For Neo, a future astronomer, Carl. At the end of the day, he drove me back to the bus station. The snow was falling harder. He wrote his phone number, his home phone number, on a scrap of paper. And he said, if the bus can't get through, call me and spend the night at my home with my family. I already knew I wanted to become a scientist, but that afternoon, I learned from Carl the kind of person I wanted to become. He reached out to me and to countless others, inspiring so many of us to study, teach, and do science. Science is a cooperative enterprise spanning the generations. It's the passing of a torch from teacher to student to teacher, a community of minds reaching back to antiquity and forward to the stars. Now, come with me. Our journey is just beginning.